Hey, thanks for joining me everyone. This is Matthew with Wadi's channel and today we are reviewing series 5 of the My Favorite WWF Hasbro Tournament. Now I've always said that series 3 of the line produced some of the greatest figures uh, that you would find. Uh, it definitely had the deepest uh, deepest line among all the figures. But just kind of like reviewing uh, some of series 5 as I do have the figures laid out right now. They have some really strong figures in this uh, in this series, and there's gonna be a lot of really difficult decisions. Originally, I did have even numbers throughout, but then I realized I do have duplicates or customs of the uh, Macho Man figure. So, for the sake of this video, I will put the Macho Man against his customs, and then at the end, I do have yet another three-man tournament. Uh, three-man battle uh, so that just so that we're able to keep all the numbers even but you know what I can't do that either because that's only five matchups you know what I could do I do have uh, customs of the British Bulldog and yet in series four I forgot to pull those figures off the shelves uh, coming back and doing series five I was going to plan on Posting those at the end, once Series 11 is done and I start diving into the odd uh, customs, I was going to save it for the, that time, but I'm thinking I might as well pull those right now, and that way I could have a one-on-one -on -one matchup here and still be able to have six figures and, uh, well, six matchups and have an even number continuing on. So I will do that right now. I will pause the video and I will be back, uh, well, for you it'll be a half a second. All right, everybody. Uh, so I had, as I said, two custom British Bulldog Series 4 figures. One of them had a completely different head sculpt than the other. Uh, so the one figure I did grab, it's very reminiscent to the Series 4 original Hasbro. So for this video, I'm going to use that figure to match up with the last member of this battle of this uh, series so that I do have an even matchup going into you know round two or I keep that pace going and then the other one with the uh, alternate head sculpt uh, different head mold I will use that as its own individual piece uh, when I do the customs at the end of uh, series 11 so you know what? I'm gonna dive right into the first original on custom and it's gonna feature the Slim Jim man himself <laughs> uh, Macho Man Randy Savage so, so many of the Macho Man figures are so odd, and I think Bone Break in Action uh, said it best. You know, they cost a fortune when you're buying them, but they sell for pennies when you're when you're trying to sell them. You know, obviously not his exact wording, but that's basically the gist of it. And he's absolutely right because when I'm buying this figure, when I first started, I think I was paying somewhere north of forty dollars on auction, and I kept losing. Like so many of the figures, I mean, Jim Neidhart is another perfect example of a figure that's like cost me forty, forty-five dollars every time I tried winning him on auction last year. Uh, couldn't get it to save my life, and then I finally won him for like you know again the forty to forty-two, forty-five dollar price range. Nowadays, I try and sell him for twenty bucks, and I'll be lucky to get ten dollars on auction for it. So it's so frustrating. You never want to lose money, so. Uh, so this Macho Man, again, this is like a, a $45 figure when you first get him, but you try to sell him nowadays, and you know, you probably get $15 if you're lucky. Still, aesthetically, I absolutely love this figure. He, he I remember, uh, I want to say 1993, they were having the, the, the power or the body slam competition, kind of like a Big John Stud type deal. Uh, this time it was with Yokozuna. Now, this man was over 600 pounds, okay, so it's highly unlikely you're going to be able to lift a man that size. And I believe they may have been doing like a, uh, on, they were on board a, a ship, possibly for the Navy or something. And Macho Man, he was in the ring. You know, he was uh, kind of commentating on the different wrestlers who got in to try and body slam Yokozuna, couldn't do it. And then he joined in the competition, tried to body slam Yokozuna, failed, wearing this exact same outfit, which is so awesome. You know, with his little jacket, little tassels and everything, this is such a good looking figure. I really enjoy this. Now, this right here, it's not a playable figure. Yeah, it's got a good pose and everything, but that's not what I mean. To me, I think that this is kind of like your Series 5 Hogan LJN. 
it's more for display and not necessarily something you would use per se as a as an actual wrestler. You had Macho Man from one, two, and three, with two and three being the same figure, just different uh, name on the back of the trunks. So you probably would not use this as a, as your primary wrestler, but it was just nice to have if you're a kid. Again, Series Five onward didn't have a single one of these figures, so this was all new for me. You know, first time I ever saw these figures was when I started my collections. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I like how it says Macho Man, oh yeah, on the back. That's so awesome. This is such a beautiful looking figure. Now, uh, Denver Moore from eBay, he did a really, uh, really awesome checkered version of the figure. Now the face and hands and everything, obviously the way that it's sculpted, it has more of like a clay look to it, so not an actual like Hasbro type version. But I still enjoy the display of the figure. I mean, I think it looks fantastic. And I was super excited to get this figure. It's just something completely different. It's unique. And, you know, I'm all about the unique figures, the individuality, different customizers with different color schemes, making it their own, and it's so awesome. So I just like being able to show the figure of these amazing artists. It comes down between the original or the first custom. I'm still pushing the original forward. Uh, to me, I think that's an easy uh, answer. But one of my favorite Hasbro customizers, uh, Derek, on eBay, you find him, look him up, Pumpkin Man 1986. He did come out with an absolutely splendid version. <laughs> so overall, you know, there's a few minor changes, such as the pants. You went from like a green color scheme here with the original to a yellow color scheme on the pink pants here. You know, kept the white and a yellow boots, which is, you know, awesome. So, obviously, here and there, he's made subtle changes. You know, the jacket, obviously, being the biggest draw to the figure, changing the white with the black. And, again, you went from a, a pink and green all around to uh, yellow and pink type of uh, color scheme. So they kept the oh yeah on the jacket, which is great. Uh, same thing on the back of the jacket. This is a tough one because they're both beautiful figures. And again, I kind of think of Slim Jim every time I think of I look at this figure. But Derek, his customs are just so spectacular. Not necessarily running away with, with the tournament, but a majority of his figures have pushed forward to, to round two, and I'm so excited. Uh, to me, I think this was a not necessarily easy, but I think it's a fair choice to push Derek's uh, Macho Man custom into the next round. The next battle is going to feature Warlord. Uh, so this one is... I don't know. This one, the arm press, I'm not... You know, you know, I enjoy the figure, of course. Uh, I don't mind the arm press pose. The way that his back is kind of like, like he's like he's leaning back like this. It's not like up forward like most of the other figures. So that was this. That was different. But the chest plates, the chain, everything. Uh, obviously, I've, I've talked about it a lot. All of these figures we're looking at, they're all they're all duplicates. None of all these are part of my primary display. And sticking with the arm press pose, we're going with Sid Justice. <laughs> So we know a Sid Vicious Galoob is my all-time favorite Galoob figure and possibly my favorite wrestling figure, period. And Sid Justice, you know, they, they keep they keep it strong, you know, with a, with another really solid figure going from Galoob to Hasbro. Not anything wrong with the figure. Good pose, good stance. Again, it's just a, another Hulk Hogan Series 1 type figure. You'll see this all the time with these particular poses. Uh... I think for the simple fact that they both have the same pose, essentially, I am going to go with Warlord. I, I think it's just a fair assessment. Uh, in the end, at the end of the day, I just think that the Warlord is a better figure because of the different designs of the figure. You know, a simple black and blue figure compared to some of the different details of the Warlord, to me, I, I think it's an easy and, and fair assessment that uh, Warlord would be the perfect choice. <laughs> So here's a fun one. It's going to be fun, but it's also going to be tough because you're going to lose a really great figure. And we're going to feature Skinner 
I believe it's Steve Kern, uh, against Hulk Hogan. So we'll start with Skinner. This is one of the most ideal figures of the entire Hasbro line. I couldn't quite put him in my top 10 favorite, but I think it's fair to make him a top 15 figure. Absolutely elite. I mean, this is easily a $40 to $50 figure. Now, nowadays, because I think everybody that was buying these figures were buying them at the same time I was buying them, so they were always bidding up the price. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. For me, in the beginning, I was always losing on these figures. But this is, again, a $45 figure, easy. You could find a seller who's brand new to selling and or doesn't sell Hasbro's or wrestling figures. Maybe they got a few on their site, and you might get them for like $15, $20, $25, but it's too easy to, to find a figure like this uh, for around 40 bucks or more. You know, I actually had one on my site. I was selling for about $25. And, uh, you know, I gotta, you, you get sellers or sometimes you get offers for them and whatnot. Uh, sometimes they always want to lowball you, which which sucks. Um, I've talked about it. You know, you uh, I always try to meet a seller at a price that's very reasonable or very close to what they're asking, if I can. Unless their prices are out, absolutely outrageous. You know, if they're selling this figure for... $20 and I look at it I'm like hey you know there's some paint loss uh, some discoloration you know I'll give you 15 for them or 1750 or something like that uh, now if they were selling this figure for like a hundred dollars you know I came in with an offer of 25 you know I, I think that's reasonable because at hundred dollars that's on that's an unreasonable price but uh yeah so if you're looking for this figure I have one online fifth uh, mint condition I pretty much raised the price by 10 bucks because I, I realized that it was, uh, I actually paid a whole lot more for it than what, than what it was, uh, than I what I originally had listed for. It happens. It will itself that price one day, maybe, uh, I'm not holding my breath anytime soon, but you know, Hey, that's why you leave the option for an offer. And you know, someone sends an offer and it's reasonable and fair. Of course. Uh, Hulk Hogan, I think many people find this figure to be the best among the four options. I think this figure is only better than the Series 2 Bear Hug Hogan. Yeah, for starters, the arm punch, I'm okay with that. Not the worst, it's just not my favorite. That's one thing. Because he's more in-ring gear without any clothing, I think that's what a lot of people gravitate towards. Me, I don't mind the shirt and all that. To me, that's extra design, which makes the figure look extra special. Plus, there's a little, a lot of figures from Hasbro. They got these one arm, you know, the way that it's bent like that, kind of like your uh, Bob Orton from uh, from LJN, which I don't like. Obviously, not as you know, um, you know, Bob Orton is stationary like that. You know, this is at least movable. You can still do things with this figure. Hulk Hogan, maybe thirty to forty-five dollars. Some I've seen a sell for as high as fifty or sixty. Again, you gotta be the right seller for this type of product. Um, someone like a uh, uh, Andrew Todd Martin through Mabel Toys, he could probably get a pretty beat up Hulk Hogan like this for seventy five dollars, and then you know your 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 new seller could probably sell this for fifteen dollars and not get a sale for it. So, still great, two great figures. Absolutely love them both. Uh, Steve Kern, uh, Skinner, he, to me, is the easy answer. He's a unique figure. You know, I love the little stomp thing that, you know, a lot of the figures have. That's pretty awesome. I just think it's an overall better design than the Hogan figure. All right, so uh, the next battle, this is another toughie. Uh, we're going to feature the model Rick Martel against Jacques Rougeau, the Mountie. They're two really spectacular figures. Obviously, when I think Rick Martel, I don't think Strike Force. I think this right here. I've seen him in blue, uh, different blue designs. I've seen him in white. And, of course, the pink is always the version that I'm most familiar with as the model. Year 1991, uh, he took over as the new uh, in-ring Royal Rumble time elapsed champion. However you want to, however you want to say that. Uh, he spent almost an hour <clears throat> in the ring at the time. 
eclipsing uh, Ted DiBiase's uh, title, title, if you want to use that word, uh, from the previous year. I think Million Dollar Man was in there for like 51 minutes or something. I think um, he came in, in, I think, just under an hour. I don't remember the exact time. And then you had guys like Bob Backlin with 50 plus minutes, and, you know, obviously British Bulldog and Shawn Michaels in 95 when they were the first two in, last two out. But I think that champion or that matchup was a little bit different because uh, the Royal Rumble was every one minute a new uh, contestant come in as opposed to every two minutes. So even though they were, you know, one through 30, they didn't have quite as long an uh, extensive time as some of the others. So, here is another solid figure, a uh, $20, $30 figure, if you're looking at it, really nice. You could get this figure for as low as $15, maybe $10. Again, it all depends on the buyers or the sellers that are just streaming it. I didn't grab the one. So, th these figures all come out of one package. And what I like to do on my auction, on my sales is build entire series together. And I put those up on auction, or not on auction, but on sale. The Mountie, uh, with shock stick, this is a fantastic looking figure. And my last LJN tournament, the Mountie made it very far in my tournament. And I'm really hoping to see this one do the same. As much as I enjoy the pose of this figure, I think it looks really solid. I, again, sometimes, especially with Hasbro, because uh, the, a lot of the poses, you can make a bad pose into a solid pose because of the movability. Um, so that's why a lot of times the design of the figure is really going to play a huge role, even larger role than, you know, the LJNs. So Mountie to me, again, another easy answer. Not an easy battle per se, but an easy answer. All right, so this one is going to feature Jim the Anvil Nightheart. You know what? I can't do that either. You know what? Once again, guys, I'm sorry. I got to pause. Sorry about that, everyone. So it looks like the Bulldog figure I did pull off the uh, primary shelf. I am going to put, uh, put back and once again, leave him uh, for the uh, last matchup where once I get past Series 11 and I focus on the customs, he'll be by himself. Reason being... Uh, from Derek Pumpkin Man 1986, I did have a custom of Jim the Anvil Nightheart, and I just kind of looked up and glanced at the wall and realized I had a had a custom of this one, and so yeah, uh, so it'll be custom on original, and that leaves Series Five to stay to stay it as as it is. I won't have to use a Series Four custom uh, bulldog figure, so. Uh, we will have your even matches still. And so Derek, he did a few good things with the uh, with the figure. Obviously, skip into the kind of like the heart foundation coloring with black, pink, and white all around. Throwing the anvil on his boots and even on his, his uh, singlet here. Absolutely fantastic. Love the display of this. The more of the, the rocket uh, type version with the... Uh, New Heart Foundation with the Owen Hart type of color scheme with the little, you know, checkers and whatnot. I mean, color scheme, I'm perfectly okay with that. This is a solid figure all around. And, sorry, had to pause. Uh, had to sneeze. Oh, man. That's like the third time I had to pause this video. I'm sure my viewers are getting antsy over that. <laughs> Again, but talking about the figure... You know, this whole one-arm thing, you know, I love the little wind-up and whatnot. It, it's solid. It, it's just a solid overall figure. This is one of the unicorn figures that I've been talking about, and I use this as an example when I talk about uh, sale price of these, of these figures. Again, Nightheart, a consistent figure that used to sell for $40-plus every time uh, I used to, to buy them or, or used to bid on them. And when I finally won them, at forty plus dollars, every time I bought duplicates of this figure, I might see it sell for, you know, fifteen bucks or something, or I might bid on it. Maybe it's been up for two days with no bids. I bid on it and I'm a high bidder at a dollar, 
And then as the time progresses, I, I bid up higher and higher and end up getting it for like $15, $18, $20. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, I got this for $15. I got this figure for $22, $25. The figure regularly sells for $40 to $45. So, you know, you buy it for 20 bucks, you have the opportunity to double your profit on that. But uh, nowadays, like I said, you're essentially looking at a $10 figure, 15 if you're lucky, and it's, it's terrible. Uh, I won't simply give my figures away f for peanuts, you know. If I can't sell them for the price I want, you know, I'm content holding on to them. And like I said, I mean, I, I build these lots. I, I purchase these figures because I intend to uh, build lots, you know, all of Series 1 in, in one lot, all of Series 5 in one lot, Series 3 in a lot, Series 7. In a lot. And I do that for the buyers, to for the ease of purchase. That way they can get all items from they can get an entire series at once as opposed to trying to buy them up individually so uh and i get it uh sometimes i might have a listed price of 300 bucks and to me i'm undervaluing i'm maybe turning a five or ten dollar profit on it if 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 anything but a lot of people they don't see that they just see a high price tag and they're not willing to pay all that up front but i'm okay you know again I'm in no rush to sell. If it sells, I'm, I'm perfectly happy. If it doesn't, I'll hold on to it until it does. One day, I'm sure it will. Uh, with these figures, I don't know, man. Uh, as much as I like the original, the customs, kind of like with my LJN tournament, they're just running away with the tournament. Uh, I don't think it's even a question mark anymore. I think most of the customs are far superior than the original. Um, alright, so, looks like the very last battle is going to feature Money Incorporated. Well, not Money Inc. was mostly uh, IRS plus uh, Ted DiBiase. But I still, you know, consider Virgil as part of the Million Dollar Corporation. Uh, bodyguard of the Million Dollar Man. But, you know, sometimes I might list these two to together, you know, call it Money Inc. because... You know, it's you could call it that per se. Again, two really great figures. You wouldn't think of Virgil to have like a really awesome figure, but this whole boxing outfit that he has, this is an absolutely fantastic figure. And I love when he beat the million dollar man and won the million dollar belt. A lot of people hate on the Virgil figure, but to me, again, I think it's if not an elite figure, it's definitely a top tier figure in my opinion. Because there's 92 figures, uh, I'd probably say something like the top 20 maybe are elite figures with like 21 through 50 being top tier or, or 20 through 40 being top tier, 41 through 60 being mid tier and 61 through 92 being bottom tier or something around that area. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. They're just two great figures. I Because this has a much better look to it, you know, with... with with IRS, the way that his he's like top heavy, you know, small thin legs with like a bigger, you know, from waist up is like really big and like covering over his legs. It's kind of like a funky look, you know. But a lot of these figures, like Million Dollar Man from Series Two with the green suit, same kind of look. And he also has that leg stomping feature as well. But that is, you know, IRS right there. That is a fantastic look. Uh, da, 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 da. But Virgil, where are we at? 24 minutes? Yeah, uh, I don't want this video to carry on too much longer, so I'm going to make my decision. Not a huge fan of the arm punch, but some of these figures, like Papa Shango, you know, Virgil's another. The arm punching motion, along with, with how his left arm looks, it, it, it works, and, and I'm thrilled to have gotten this one. Two solid figures, but Virgil does push forward to IRS so this was kind of a different video for me to me it wasn't so much focusing on the figures but I felt like this video was more focusing on the price tag of these figures huh that wasn't intentional I just kind of mentioned the price tag on a few of these and then all of a sudden it just kind of <laughs> went downhill from there um hopefully you guys still got a kick out of this one uh, nonetheless and uh you know, really uh, would have agreed with my choices. 
So series, well, we're through one through five now. That leaves series six through 11. And uh, I'll still have the customs to do, so that's not going to change. And um, hopefully, uh, let's see what's today. Today is Sunday, uh, Sunday, January the 8th. Uh, so today, January the 8th, I, I made videos or series three, five, and uh, series three, four, and five. Uh, I haven't been given the dates for the other two videos. I would like to make a couple of the videos today. Probably not Hasbro tournament related, but uh, we'll see if I have time to come down, come back down here and do those. Uh, I'm gonna close the video for now and uh, let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching, everyone. Talk to you soon, and goodbye for now.